In these few examples, we're going to do two. Uh, we're going to try to solve trig equations, um, but this time we're going to be messing with um, half and double angle types of problems. Um, that number right there is going to get thrown into that. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to use trig identities all the time to kind of rewrite this or anything like that. Not at all the case. What's going to happen is when you go back to the idea of graphing and you have a sine b x. So that value right there messes with your period. So our period, instead of it repeating itself every 2 pi, oh, and by the way, we're going to do two different kinds of answers. We're going to limit it to from 0 to 2 pi, which is pretty normal, but we're also going to talk about what if you don't have a limit. So we're going to write the infinite amount of answers, or we're going to write um, just kind of how many answers do we have from 0 to 2 pi. So your period, that 2 pi theta, uh, that 2 is going to mess with your period. So normally your period is 2 pi, but we are going to divide it by 2. So your period is pi. It also means whatever answers we were about to get, we're going to get twice as many answers that we're, we should have gotten. So uh, right now we don't worry about a thing. We're looking for sine of some angle is going to get us a negative root 3 over 2. That's why our special triangles exist. So sine of 60 is going to get you a root 3 over 2, um, but we're talking about sine of 60 in, let's see. So sine is going to be negative down here and down here. So we have 2 theta is going to be some pi over 3s because it's a 60. And this is 60 degrees past 180. That puts us at 240 and 60 degrees shy of 360 is 300. It takes, uh, let's see, um, 1, 2, 3, 4 60s to get there. So that's 4 pi over 3, and then 5 60s to get here. Now, if that 2 wasn't there, you'd be done. However, you do have a 2. So we are going to multiply everything by a half. So um, each of our answers is about to get messed with. So, um, and our period is pi. So there's another piece of this puzzle that we're going to have. So we're going to be multiplying this by a half and this by a half. So multiply by a half, multiply by a half. So theta is going to equal, uh, that two can simplify with the four. So it's going to be 2 pi over 3. Um, and I'm going to write the other one down here of 5 pi over 6. Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit tricky because we're going to double the amount of answers. So we're going to keep on tacking on a pi, a coterminal angle, uh, as many as we can until we get beyond 2 pi. So we're going to be adding pi onto this. So that means we're going to be adding 3 pi over 3 onto this, and we're going to be adding 6 pi over 6 onto this, just to kind of deal with the common denominator. So if we take and add 2 pi over 3 plus a period, that puts it at a 5 pi over 3. And if we add another 3 pi over 3, that's an 8 pi over 3, which is over 2 pi. All right, so in each of these is going to get doubled. So if you had one answer, one answer here, you're going to double it. So you're only going to be able to do the adding the period on one time. And then here, we're going to add 6 pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. And if you did it again, you'd be beyond. And that, we should have had four answers, but our period got doubled, so it doubles the amount of solutions that we get. All right, so that is part A. Part B to this would be we take our original answers, 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6, and we account for the infinite amount of coterminal angles. So we each did one coterminal angle to tack on to these. So this is locking us between 0 and 2 pi. If we don't have that, then we're just going to add um, n number of periods. But you got a state where n is an integer. 
because you can't have a fraction as an n. You can have positives or negatives because you're just either going in one direction or the other direction. Um, pi, so you can have positive or negative whole numbers here. So pretty much that's always going to be it, and you just have an infinite amount of them. But it's always going to be n times whatever your period is. And that just changes depending upon the problem. Um, if there's no value on here, then it's always just um, 2 pi times n. All right. So, so the infinite's not too bad. You're just going to take your original answers and just tack on whatever your period is. All right, so we'll do one more. And so on this one, we need to get the tangent 3 theta by itself. So we divide the 3 over. Tangent of 3 theta is going to be a root 3 over 3. Um, and that actually would have came from, if we unrationalized it, it's a 1 over root 3. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, our period's going to get messed with again. So normally it's 2 pi, but now we're dividing it by 3, and it's tripling amount of the solutions that we got going on here. So that is our period. So um, and we may need to deal with common denominators and whatever, but we'll deal with that in a second. So that is our period. Uh, we're going to get, so if we get two answers out of this, that actually means we're going to get six answers out of this. So um, this goes back to this. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're looking at a 30, 60, 90. And we want 30 for opposite over adjacent. So our reference angle is 30. So we are looking at um, tangents positive here and here. So we want 30 degrees. And we want 30 degrees past 180, so that's 210. So we're looking at 3 theta is going to be um, pi over 6. And... Um, it takes 7 30s to get here, so 7 pi over 6. And I'm leaving space because we're going to divide by 3, which is really multiplying by a third. Okay, so theta is going to be pi over 18 and 7 pi over 18. All right, so we need this to be over 18s. So that's going to be multiplied by 6. So we're going to be tacking on 12 pi over 18s to these things, which really means since we already have we have one here and one here, we're going to add two more to make this 3 and two more to make this 3. So, um, so we'll add 12. That'll make a 13 pi over 18. If you add 12 again, that's a 25 pi over 18. And if you added it one more, you'd get more than 36 pi over 18. you get 37 pi over 18. So then that would be too much. And then if here, we get a 19 pi over 18 and a 31 pi over 18. And that is our six solutions. So that is when we're limited between 0 and 2 pi. So if you're just doing... Um, the infinite amount of solutions actually is going to be, I think, less work because um, you write your originals and you just add n 2 pi over 3s. n 2 pi over 3s. Where n is an integer. Oops, where n is an integer. There you go. Okay, so um, so that is takes care of all of our integer, all of our coterminal angles because we just have uh, again representing n as an integer, so no fractions. Um, it could be positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers. Again, that just tells us this the direction that we're going to go with our coterminals. So that was um, solving trig equations um, part one. And we'll do one more video associated with that. Again, they just seem to get a little rougher as we go. Um, 
but again it, you just had a number here and all that did is it messed with the period which basically just messed with the uh, the quantity of your solutions um, and then it also uh, messes with the periods so that was part one